Well, happy Thanksgiving, everybody, and welcome to our first word for this week. Uh, we're diving into our Advent season on Sunday, and so we begin this season of preparation leading us up to Christmas. Preparation and reflection. Uh, and so in the sermon series, we're going to kind of visit each of these four words, ponder, pray, praise, and proclaim. And so we're starting with pondering. And uh, Advent, of course, uh, as I said, is a time of preparation and reflection, kind of like Lent is leading up to Easter. Um, it's this time for us to reflect and uh, prepare ourselves to meet Jesus again. Uh, to receive him as our own. And so it's a time that we remember him coming, uh, that God became human and he was born. Uh, he entered our world and we receive him in kind of a fresh way as not just the savior of the world, but also our own personal savior as personal. And we also rejoice. We look forward to him coming back we rejoice in his glory and the promises he's made and he's going to return someday and make all those things real uh, in our experience and uh, and so Advent is a time for all of those things and so as we kind of direct our attention to pondering this week our text comes from Psalm 48 uh, verse 9 says within your temple O God we meditate on your unfailing love and so we want to ponder we want to meditate on God's unfailing love what it mean what it means uh, that Jesus came for us and so as I have begun have begun pondering that um, I'm struck by some of the paradoxes in John chapter 1 as we're told that you know, from the, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. That Jesus is God, and he's been around forever. That he, there's no beginning and no end, and yet this one who's always existed uh, has a start date as a human being. He gets a birth date, and uh, he's tied to time in a different way, and uh, that's kind of striking. Um, and as the God of the universe who's always existed, he's like the most famous one of all. And yet, as he enters the world he made and visits the people he made, we don't recognize him. He's, he's the most famous one, but nobody recognizes who he is. That he, John tells us he's the light that shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. So he's the light that we need. He's the light that brings that makes sense of things and brings understanding and yet in the darkness we don't recognize him we don't want him around sometimes we just like to be in the dark uh, i'm also struck by some of the ideas in that paul makes in philippians chapter 2 where he says that our attitude should be just like the attitude of jesus that he had all this glory all this power all this authority but he didn't demand his rights. He let all that go in order to come and not just be with us, not just as an example, but as our sacrifice, as the lamb who takes, the sin, takes away the sins of the world. And, um, and so we see this striking contrast again, that he was in his glory. He was in this safe and wonderful place, and he let that go. He left it, uh, not just to experience life like one of us, but to actually take on our experience and lay down his life to pay for our brokenness and our sin and our rebellion. Uh, and so we don't deserve it. And so we ponder and we meditate on his unfailing love that he would let all that go for us. Uh, we don't deserve it, but we need it desperately. And, uh, and he's enough for us and he came and he wants that he wants each of us to experience that and to be set free from the chains of sin that bind us um, to be released into the life and joy that only he can give and uh, so I, I look forward to uh, pondering with you on Sunday and celebrating this season with you so Aaron Turn it over to you as you've got a song for us today. Yeah, I've 
done quite a bit of pondering in the last couple of minutes as you were talking. Um, we're back doing Christmas tunes because it's Advent. It's the Christmas season. Um, or will be on Sunday. Yes. Got to get one after Thanksgiving. It is important that we give thanks. Um, one of the songs we're singing is, uh, I think it's Meredith Andrews' take on God Rest You Merry Gentlemen. And the chorus is, He has come for us, this Jesus. He is the hope for all mankind. Um, he has come for us, the Messiah, born to give us life. Um, and I think, even as the words you used were unfailing love, and I think what hit me as I pondered um, was even when Jesus said that he would return. Um, and the, the phrasing he had, he had used when talking to his disciples, and he said, the time is coming and has come. To me, that's always hit me as him being outside of time. God is not fixed within the parameters of what we know is time. Yeah. And therefore, and you can correct me on this theologically, <laughs> this is my pondering out loud, therefore it's done. He has returned again from his perspective. The deed is done. He has paid the price and he did come and we know from our perspective that he's coming again. But where he is, it's, but where it's he already is, done. It's yeah. done. He, yeah. He's it's like, awesome. I see the end of that timeline. And that's what happens. Um, so as I, as I sing this now and as we sing this on Sunday, I, I am pondering the fact that God has come for us and did come for us in the, in the form of flesh and man. But he is coming again and has he has come for us this Jesus he's the hope for all mankind he has come for us the Messiah born to give us life come for us and we look forward to celebrating that with you on Sunday. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great week and again, happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. See you later. See you.